Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about front-end. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, thank you for your videos, always good advice. Thank you for watching. I have a question and I would be glad if you could help. I've been working as a front-end developer for over two years and I've spent a lot of time outside of my work building and learning new things. So I feel really comfortable with areas like TypeScript component, composition and testing. However, the area that I feel needs to be improved is global app architectures such as store structure communication between the store and mobx versus towards the reducer and similar things. It's not difficult for me to build something but I've always find myself thinking about the sustainability of the code, ease of testing and debugging. What advice could you give to people in a similar situation? How could one improve the skills of building good architecture? This is an excellent question and I will go as far as to say that you will very it's very unlikely that you will find the answer to this question anywhere in the front-end space. The reason why I claim that, even even though this is front-end, even though I'm fully aware of that there's tons of people writing very great articles and blog, and blog posts about how to work effectively with TypeScript, React, Angular, whatever you, you might be doing, right? Uh, Re Redux versus MobX, etc., etc., like the best practices, to, so to speak. These are all good things, and there are absolutely things that you will learn from just reading that sort of stuff, right? And there's also plenty of people who are in the space of, well, architecture. But the thing about front-end architecture and how to make code maintain sustainable is that there is really no one, in my opinion, within the front-end space who has this down where there's a consistent, like there is no, I've never seen anybody similar to someone like say Eric Evans or Martin Fowler or Bob Mar uh, like, uh, Uncle Bob uh, within the front-end space. Someone who is, I'm not saying an authority, but is considered to be an authority on front-end architecture because there's really, there's very little in the front-end space about this. So what I will tell you is what I've found to be the most reliable way for you to just learn architecture. And it, this, is the, this is at least in my opinion, this is the beautiful thing about architecture. It is universal when you understand it. In many cases, I will say that architecture, it is a higher concept than what you necessarily need to express through code. Now you need to have a good understanding of the code that you are writing and the system that you're designing and the limitations and so forth. It's similar to, uh, I read a really good article about how engineers in the operation space, uh, I think it was at Google or with Amazon or so forth, they had posted about, okay, how do we make resource allocations? Like how do they calculate that stuff? And basically what they always do is that they make a map of whatever resources they might need. Like how many boxes are we gonna need? How many CPUs, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, but they always have uh, that conversation within the space of what the physical resources are because it's really easy in so something like mathematics to get so theoretical about something that you actually you, you detach yourself to the point uh, from the thing that you're actually going to do to the point where you're actually just making calculations that aren't going to be relevant in the real world. Now architecture is a very similar sort of thing the worst architects in the world are the people who are, as I said, more towards the theory about everything. They don't really have a strong, solid understanding of the underlying tech and the considerations. But what I argue is that if you want to get really good at this sort of stuff, I suggest that you become a full stack developer. And that's not because people who work in the full stack space are better, or like the back-end developers are necessarily better at architecture than the people in the front-end space. What I'm saying is that the, the, the true epiphanies of how to solve, in my opinion at the very least, how to solve good architecture and how to make good architectural decisions, it is a, it, it's really, at the end of the day, about figuring out 
what matters for the problem that you are solving and what the components of what you're solving are and whether or not the components or like the way that you design it, it, it if have you have you composed this thing in the proper way and the best way for you to figure that out is to actually understand multiple types of problems it, it can be in the front end space or in the back end space or like in ops etc etc or in, in in one of my favorite things is having multiple languages because there are certain things that one language does the way it may it may not be the case that that's happening in the other place or there might be other languages who are using different types of tooling or they have popularized within their community ways of working that is not present in your specific ecosystem. But I argue that the good idea is still a good idea. And that's where I think that a lot of this power comes from. An example would be if you take a look at React, the composition that you are talking about, that type of composition is very similar in the Redux flow, like the or in MobX and so forth, all and the idea of a reducer, all this stuff. Guys, these are not things that the React team came up with. These are ideas taken from, from other areas. Everything from mathematics to, like, to computer, more higher level computer science uh, ideas, etc., etc. These ideas are out there. And if you want to get really good at structuring your code, I argue that the best thing for you is to not necessarily focus on how to get good at structuring code in, say, a React project. I argue that the best thing for you is to figure out how to structure a, solu a, good, a solution to a problem. And the best, in my opinion, in, the in, in our field of software development, the best way to figure out how to do that is to work with uh, like a full stack type of deal, like where you have to deal with the whole thing. Because the uh, when you're working in, say, backend, you will have different things to consider. When Let's say that you're talking about testability. Well, testability is a very interesting concept because depending on how you structure your code, you're going to hey, make it easier for yourself to test things or you're going to make it really hard for yourself to test things. And some of those considerations, they very naturally overflow. Like these concepts, it's very similar to just learning regular old programming. Some of the stuff is actually going to be very applicable in the front-end space. And the reason why I say that I think that this is a better approach than for you to try to figure out that through the front end channels and like just go to that community is because that community at at present and I hope that's going to change with time is all about things that are non theoretical in many cases it's mostly about tooling uh, new and um, workflow improvements it's about um, about new upcoming like standards etc etc and, and so forth there's very little in the front end space about theory about theoretical things that are very useful uh, general concepts to know about that's much more likely for you if, uh, to happen within the back end space so if you really want to get good at architecture i urge you to take uh, to take up say a back end language or start learning about a, uh, like start looking around at other things than within the front end space because sure I can sit here and I can give away all of my tips for how to structure a front end project or like how to do that but at the end of the day all that's going to give you is a copy paste version of what I'm telling you all you're going to learn from that is that oh this is how Frederick does it and maybe you, you, you would get some tips from me but you will not yourself be able to derive good solutions for your specific situation which is the thing that I really think that you should go for so what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I learned at the very least or and I argue that this is the best way to learn how to structure a project is by understanding that there are multiple ways with pros and cons to do anything and it doesn't matter if it's front end, back end, ops, etc., etc. These are problems. This is like where the mathematicians get really excited because I mean that's kind of their. Th in many cases, it's their thing to take something, like create a generic solution to problems, and then apply it in some way. We don't have to go that far, but I think that the foundational idea is very solid. It's very good. Start if you want to get good at architecture and figuring out how to structure things in a project. What you're really looking to get good at is to identify what matters for your specific situation what are the components that make up the solution to your problem where are the pain points where are their their options how can you do things in a better way and some case in some cases you're going to find the answers to those questions 
within your own community or your own language or your own stack. And in some cases, you're going to have to go outside of your community to find answers to those questions. And that's why I argued to you that you should look at yourself more as a problem solver than a specific stack developer, because it's going to make you much more able to find good solutions that are in another area of IT. Because if you don't go and look over there, you're probably not going to find it in your own in your own space. And if you want to get better, well, that's probably the best way to get to go about it. Have a great day.